Awesome. Hello, everyone. Thanks for tuning in today. Um, Erica, why don't we start off and get you to introduce yourself and we'll start there. Well, my name is Erica Krupen and I am the owner of Krupen Scoopin Scoopin and I am a professional pooper scooper. Amazing. And today we're going to be chatting through lots of things, lots of different topics, but overall how you started and grew a poop scooping business. I feel like this is a business we don't hear too much about. So I'm super excited to kind of dive into it and, and hear about how you got into the industry. So why don't we start off as well what, about and chat about what made you want to start this type of business? What got you into it? Oh, that's a loaded question right there. <laughs> So basically, I had worked um, nine to five uh, at a hospital. And I i mean, I liked it, but I didn't love it. I just knew I wanted to do something different. And a friend of mine had started their own pet waste remo re removal business. And I was kind of creeping on him online. And I seen that he was doing pretty well. And then my husband, he actually, his last name is Krupen. So him and his brothers would joke around about Krupen's poop and scooping. And I've known my husband ever since I was like five years old. And so I came home and I said, hey, I'm going to do that poop scooping thing. What do you think? And he's like, yeah, let's do it. How are you going to do it? I'm like, I don't know, but we'll figure it out. And literally the next day I went and got my DBA and hit the ground running. Amazing. Yeah, that's awesome. It, it's neat how it kind of started out as they're like, oh, this would be a fun business idea or a business name. And then you're like, no, actually, I'm going to do it. This is a thing. So, yeah, that's so that's such a fun story. Thank you. Yeah. And so your husband, does he work alongside of you now or was that more so at the beginning? No, he, so he, he does tree work. Like that's his profession. He's a climber. He's the guy that goes way, way up into the trees. I could never. And he helped me during spring rush and helped me like as needed It would because he gets laid off in the winter. So he would help me out. But for the most part, it's just, it's just me. That mm -hmm. first spring rush, I had me, my husband, uh, kids were out. My neighbor came and helped me. People from my old hospital job came out and helped because everybody was very, very intrigued on what this like poop scooping thing was. That's so awesome. That's it's new. It's cool when you start a business and you kind of have that community behind you like you did. I feel like that probably felt really good. I was probably it, yeah. It yeah. did. It, it, I had the support, and my husband, he's my number one cheerleader. He um he supports me so much when it comes to this business, and he's just so proud. He and he loves seeing where I'm taking it and what the future holds. Mm -hmm. For sure. And when you first started out, uh, even in that first year, how did you go about getting customers in that first bit of when you started your business? I created like a Google account and a Facebook page. That was like my main thing. And there was another pooper scooper that's located out of Hamilton, Canada. She's also a female scooper. And so I reached out to her and I said, Hey, you know, I see that you post some stuff online and she had a before and after picture. And I didn't necessarily have a picture like that. So I asked her, I said, Hey, can I, can I use that, that photo? Like, do you mind if I use like a before and after? Cause it was like such a good one. Cause I'm not just, you can't steal people's content, right? He's <laughs> yeah. like, yeah, sure. Absolutely. Go ahead. So I used her photo first. I got some traction and then I got my own before and after picture. And I posted that in like 47 buy, sell trade groups right before I left on a jewelry convention for like a weekend to learn how to become a better jeweler. Cause I was like a pharmacy technician, a jeweler, and now a pooper scooper all at the same time. Yeah. yeah. That's totally me. My phone was going crazy. It was like, bing, 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 bing. Wow. And so I had to mute my phone. I was like, oh my gosh, what did I just do? I didn't realize that I had just propelled my business forward so far. Mm -hmm. That's neat how you posted in all these kind of community groups to see if, uh, you know, especially that before and after, I feel like those have such a great impact because people are like, oh, I want my yard to look like that. I have dogs, you know, I don't want to go pick up the poop. So I think that's such a good idea to post in those groups, especially if you're just starting off, because it's kind of a free, easy way uh, to get your name out there. Um, and so now, now that you're, I think, how many years have you had your business now? This is my fourth year. I started in, in 2018. So actually, I'm, go, I'm going into like year four. Nice. Yeah, that's amazing. So four years in, now what is your biggest kind of lead generator? It's Google. I have built up my Google listing. I have lots of good reviews. I have gotten some 
not so good reviews, but I, you know, I've owned up to that and rectified that situation. Uh, but Google and then referrals too, because I create a good customer experience with my customers. They tell their friends, they tell their neighbors, and that's been a true blessing. Mm -hmm. And let's dive into that customer experience side a little bit as well. So what do you do for your customers to kind of create that like really great customer experience for them? Well, a lot of it starts with Jabber. <laughs> Jabber has really helped me streamline my customer service. When they reach out to me, usually it's through my website or Google or Facebook, and that funnels them right to my onboarding form. And my onboarding form is very detailed. So it, it lets me get to know like their property. It lets me get to know how many dogs they have. And so I have all of this information and then I'm able to quote them properly. And then we kind of go back and forth on, you know, what their expectations. I let them know what our expectations are. So there's not, you know, miscommunication. And then when we do decide to move forward, our billing seamless, our scheduling is seamless. And we communicate so well with our customers. They know when we're on our way. They know when we're leaving. And if there's an issue with their property or their dog's waste looks weird, I know it sounds weird, but we will message them. Hey, listen, you know, Susie's uh, poo looked a little weird this uh, week. Maybe you should keep an eye on, on them. And they really, really appreciate that because dogs are people like they're the babies, you know, they're mm -hmm. our babies. No, totally. I know I have a pet as well. And that's how you determine their health. So it does that. It's like yeah. funny to talk about, but it's so true because if it's, you know, something weird is happening there, it usually means, you know, maybe they're not healthy or something's happening. So I think. Yeah, that's such a great way because you obviously it's like you care for the dogs and you want and your customers. Yeah, like you said, they're like children. So, um, no, I think that's a great way to go above and beyond for sure. Um, and uh, it's awesome that you mentioned Jobber. I mean, a uh, great little little plug there. But no, it's great that it definitely helps your business. Yeah, I, I love Jobber. I used to do a lot of this stuff manually and it took a lot of time. And Jobber has given me so much time back mm -hmm. and so being able to create that customer uh, customer service experience. That's amazing to hear. And for you, I know a busy time for you is spring rush. So how do you go about, um, especially for people maybe looking to get in this industry or, you know, a lot of other industries like lawn care, landscaping, they have a spring rush as well. Um, how do you prepare for it in terms of leading up to your spring rush season? Well, spring rush beforehand, I take a little vacation because I know it's going to be literally insane. Mm -hmm. I go, I stock up on all my supplies. I go get my trash bags, my sanitation. I go get my hair and my nails done because I know for six weeks, six weeks, I'm not getting my hair done. Yeah. I'm going to look crazy. So, so on a personal side, uh, that's what I do. I also try to get my house in order because I, I can't clean. I can't do anything because it is game time. It's very busy. So mm -hmm. I get the house in order. And then as for advertisements, I usually only have like two or three advertisements that I run. I don't get too crazy with them. It's very straight to the point. And is that, you know, like Facebook advertising or what kind of advertising do you usually do for your spring? Oh, yeah. So on Facebook, I'll just run like, a, you know, a sponsored post or I will post something along the lines of like, it's very simple. Does your dog poop <laughs> with a question mark and then croupins, poop and scooping and people either want the service or they don't and they'll comment or they or they don't or they message. So I'll run that. And then I also will run like a sponsored ad on Google, like maybe the end of like in February into March. And then after that, I usually pull my app because I am, I get too busy and I don't, I have more work that I know what to do with. Crazy. Yeah. That's a, that's awesome to get to the point where, you know, you can pull an ad back and you're like, okay, I'm good. You know, you get to the point where you're like, I know my limit. That's too much. Have you ever had a spring rush where you almost like took too many jobs and you didn't shut that ad off and you're like, you know, did you have to kind of learn the hard way? in terms of uh, taking on too much work? Yeah. So the first three years, well, the first year was crazy. Like My husband was there with me. We mm -hmm. were working sun up to sundown. And I had several people that were doing the same thing. And that was really stressful. So the following year, I thought I learned my lesson, but I, I you know, I wanted to service everybody. Right. So this past spring rush, we got a little bit pickier and we were only picking up uh, spring cleans in areas that we knew we wanted to pick up customers for weekly service because mm -hmm. before I was driving like 30 40 50 minutes away anybody that wanted to clean if I could fit it into my schedule I would but now it's more strategic because 
spring rush is what sets us up for our customers throughout the year. They come on, obviously I wanna convert them into weekly or biweekly services. So it's bit, it's more calculated this time around. Mm -hmm. um, and sure. you know what, real quick, I didn't explain what spring rush is. So any of you that are watching this, we, we live in the Midwest. And so around November, we start to get hammered with snow and then that continues until February. And then when the snow melts, that's when everybody's like, oh my gosh, my dog pooped all winter <laughs> and it's all over the place. And so that, that's when spring rush is, is right. when that snow starts to melt. Yeah. I'm in uh, Edmonton, Canada as well. And it snows so much. So I'm just, and I've always had pets. So I'm like, when I think about that, I'm like, oh, it's just the best when you don't have to be the one to go out there and like chip ice and try to get it out and, and clean up the yard. So yeah, I've given that service, you know, a poop scooping, want like a whole yard cleanup as a gift before. Cause I know it's such a bad, uh, or like as a homeowner, you're like, I would rather not. <laughs> so, uh, no, I totally, that's, it's such a great service, especially if you were, if you are somewhere where it's, you know, cold for most of the year and everything freezes over. Um, so yeah, I, I I'm sure too. Um, and I, and I guess in some cases, people that have these poop scooping businesses, like where it's hot all year round, I guess you can just, do you continue in the winter as well for the most part, or do you kind of have more of a downtime in the winter? We continue through the winter, but I do mm -hmm. shut down between Christmas and New Year's now, mm -hmm. mainly because we work really hard all year round and I want a vacation. And yes. my husband, my husband's a New Year's Day baby too. And people are home. Sometimes dogs get let out on us more because the kids are home from school. So it's, it's a good time for us to take off. Right. Um, it, but the larger yards, if say for instance, they have like a small dog and a larger yard, I usually, I pause that and then we will just do one large clean when the snow melts. But those smaller yards with uh, larger dogs, we can see the stuff. So we, we scoop what we can see. And we just kind of mm -hmm. keep going and play it by ear. But it just depends. We don't know, you know, if it's going to be a harsh winter or a mild winter. And how do you navigate that? You kind of touched on it. Um, if someone like accidentally lets their dog out or their dog gets out somehow. Um, I'm sure you've had that happen so many times. And, you know, sometimes, sometimes there's nice dogs and not so nice dogs. So how do you kind of navigate that? So that all starts with our uh, communication with our customer and our onboarding process. Mm -hmm. In the onboarding, I, I ask them what kind of dog they have because I want to be aware. You mm -hmm. know, I want to be aware of what kind of dog it is and is the, your dog aggressive. Now, most people will say, no, my dog's perfect, but we still kind of take everything into consideration. Right. Um, but some people will be like, yeah, my dogs can't be let out. You have to text us when we're, you're on the way, which we do. And we let them know, like, hey, listen. You can't have your dogs out. That's part of policy. And then we text the homeowner when we're on our way. And then we do a whistle when we go into the backyard. And then me personally, I check to see if there's any doggy doors. I check to see if they like the back sliding door is open or a side door is open. And if that is the case, I won't go in if I know it's an aggressive dog. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes I'll call, sense. Yeah, call the homeowner, knock on the door. And if we don't feel safe, we don't go back there because we're not going to risk it. Mm -hmm. But if we are in the backyard and a dog does get let out on us, we use our tools. Even if we're like walking through the backyard, we always have to have a rake in our hand or our bucket. We like we cannot be in a backyard un, un, unprotected because we can use that rake and that bucket to keep the dog away from us mm -hmm. as we back out and get out of the backyard. That makes sense for yeah. sure. And, I, and that communication part, I'm sure, is key. Just making sure that the homeowner is uh, aware of you know everything they need to prep for for you to come. Yeah. And then normally they'll text us back and say, okay. And, um, and that, but that's also knowing what kind of dog because they're okay. There was this one time where I didn't know what kind of dog it was. And I always just heard the dog bark and it was a ferocious bark. And I was in the backyard scooping. My back was to the, to the back door. And I just heard the dog barking. I'm like, this, this is it. This is how I go out. Here. If this dog gets out, this is it for me. Well, I heard it running towards me and I kind of froze and I turned around. It was a fat bottom corgi. Oh no, it just had a ferocious big bark. Yeah. A ferocious bark. And I, so I started laughing because I had been so scared of this dog for months that I never <laughs> thought to ask. This was in the beginning, what kind of dog it was. And, um, you know, I could outrun a corgi. It was fine. Yeah. 
Yeah, you're good. Yeah. You're good on the corgi. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And that's another thing too. So like we look around the property. Is there a trampoline? Is there like a jungle gym? Can we hop the fence if need mm -hmm. be? So we, we do come up with like a strategy plan when we enter a backyard, like an right. exit strategy. That makes sense for sure. Yeah. Um, another question I have for you, and you kind of touched on this when you said you were prepping for spring rush, you did a few kind of like personal things to prep because, you know, you're going to be so busy. Uh, what are some other ways that you work on, you know, work-life balance, especially during that time? It's so busy for you, but even throughout the year, what's, how do you, how do you balance it all? Well, I have a nice long conversation with my husband and kids. The kids <laughs> don't listen. The husband typically does. And I say, uh, Hey, listen, I'm not going to be around for a good six to eight weeks. I'm, I'll be home, but I'm not going to really be here. So he understands that I'm not going to be making dinner and he's okay with that. And then I hire somebody to clean my house to do the, um, the cleaning because I'm not there to clean. My husband's not going to clean. So we, we take care of that. That was a, a pain point for us because the first year, I mean, we couldn't afford somebody to clean the house. So I would come home and I'm like tired. I have to clean and I didn't want to do that. So second year we said, hey, listen, let's let's prep this. So I, I hired somebody to clean the house. I take care of that. Um, as for dinners, everybody just kind of fends for themselves. And we just kind of we ride it out and we adjust as as the weeks go on. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. I think that it's cool to hear you hire a cleaner. I, I mean, it, you know, the, it's almost like you're like a home service business owner and you're hiring another one to help you out. But it's one of those things you're like, OK, I'm going to hire someone else to do this because, you know, I'm so busy with work and it's going to make my life so much easier. So it's like a cost, but I'm sure it, it, it is such a benefit and makes you feel less stressed. Well, it's an investment, too, because we also yeah. have a landscaper. So, you know, we're here. We're, we're small business owners and we mm -hmm. want to support. My husband likes to cut down trees and trim trees. He doesn't like to mow and it would take him a long time. He would, he would spend like four or five hours <laughs> and it takes, it takes our, our lawn guy, you know, 35 minutes to take, you know, take care of our lawn or less. So we just understand, like, we'll let Pete, the professionals take care of what they're going to take care of. So then we can focus on what we want to focus on. My husband mm -hmm. wants to focus on trees. I want to focus on my business and then I want to spend my extra time hanging out with my friends or going out mm -hmm. with, the, with the kids and stuff. And so I think, and that's what I try to communicate with my customers and, and tell them like, don't be embarrassed for using this service. I want to take care of this for you because this is what I like to do. That way you can hang out with your family or do anything else than mm -hmm. dog poop. For sure. No, that's, that's so great. And um, one of my last questions for you is, you know, someone that's looking, looking to start a business similar to yours, um, you know, in the pet waste removal industry, poop scooping industry, um, what would you, what is your biggest piece of advice for people looking to uh, start a business similar to yours? I would say um, be confident in yourself this is a really good industry to get into. There will be a lot of naysayers because they don't, they just, they don't understand it. Mm -hmm. They just can't believe that an industry like this exists, but it is a growing industry. So if this is something that you want to get into, um, it might be hard at first if you tell people, but just don't listen to them right away. If they, if they have negative things to talk about and just go all into it, mm -hmm. get your supplies, File for your LLC. Make yourself as legit as make yourself legit in the beginning. Because if you start, if you start with those bad habits of just collecting cash and being like a fly by night business, it's going to be really hard to go legit and streamline things. So the sooner you start doing that, the better. Mm -hmm. uh, like with me, when I transitioned over to Jabber, I had like I know well over a hundred customers, and it took a long time to move move everybody over. Mm -hmm. And were you kind of like a paper calendar or what were you doing kind of before like notes or? I was a Google doc. I mm -hmm. was a eight or nine page Google doc with everything broken up Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. I had all my customers listed where I manually routed everybody manually had all of their information and it was just on a clipboard. And um, that's how I ran the business for quite a while, but it got exhausting. Mm -hmm. Was that work-life balance? I was always working, always, and office work every single day. And my husband's like, Erica, like you got to get away from that laptop. And so now, Fridays is my office day. 
Mm-hmm. And I, that's what I do on Fridays. And the rest of the week, I can, you know, go to the gym. I can hang out with my friends. I can work. I can spend time with family and do all the things that I want to do. And I know that everything's being um, kept up to date. And then I can take care of the office work just on Fridays. Mm-hmm. No, that sounds like, you know, yeah. such better balance. How we were saying with the work-life balance is so important. So, uh, no, it's great that you, you know, Jobber has worked for you in your business and that it keeps you organized and gives you time. I feel like it's music to our ears. So that's no, great. Yeah. And because life gets so crazy busy. And so Jobber is like my partner in crime. Mm-hmm. When I've got something else going on, you know, Jobber's sending out my reminders for invoice reminders, reminding people like, hey, pay your bill. I used to have to do all that by myself. Mm-hmm. So that's and cool. now. Yeah, you got Jobber. That's great. Well, thank you so much. I feel like there was so much value packed into this. And it's definitely an industry that I feel like so many people are like wanting to learn more, but it's kind of very niche industry. So I'm excited for people to have, you know, they can watch this video to kind of learn more and and, uh, learn how to get into it. So I think this was uh, super valuable. Um, But yeah, thank you so much. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Awesome. Okay, see you later. Bye.